All right, good afternoon. So we're going to introduce the concept of combination circuits, and it's called combination circuits because it looks at a combination of series in parallel and reduces it into a whole. So the rules that we've learned for series in parallel still hold. We just got to apply them at separate times depending on the situation. So I'm going to build this tutorial around this circuit right here, which shows essentially, and I'll fill in the blanks in a second, I have a voltage source and then I've got a a resistor here and then I branch off right there into two branches so that's parallel and they come back through there which is in a sense series circuit so we're going to try to take this circuit and figure out all the properties what's the voltages the currents etc and in the process learn some very important rules that ultimately guide series and parallel and all combinations therein okay so below is a combination of resistors connected in series and parallel so that's what I was saying earlier and I'll review what, what is in series and what is in parallel. So that's supposed to be nice. Okay. So let's start with the voltage source. And I'm going to go this way. I'm going to go this way in a circuit. And I'm going to end up this way. Okay. So imagine that's the current flowing. So you can see that if I want to start here and I want to end up here, I must go through the 24 I can branch, I can take an upper branch, or I can take a lower branch, but when I come back to here, I must pass through the six. So long story short is that the voltage source is in a series with the 24 and 6 ohm resistors. Okay, and then the upper part are two branches, and that's where the parallel is going to come in. Okay, so parallel to these resistors are the two branches, one, two, and the bottom branch has one, two resistors that are in series with each other. It's not with the battery, but in series with each other. Because if I follow this branch, I must pass through both 30 ohm resistors. So that's why they're in series. And then the upper branch only has the, six, oops, let me, sorry, the 60 ohm resistor. Okay, so now that's, we're going to use that idea to help us figure out how to find the effective resistance. So our task is to understand how this... Uh, combination circuit or complex circuit okay determines the current voltage drops and the effective resistance so the first thing we're going to tackle is what is the effective resistance of the circuit understanding how these are all connected and I'm going to use these statements here to guide okay so let's take this branch right here Okay, they are in series with each other, so the 30 and 30 are in series, so together that branch is 60 ohms. I'm just adding 30 and 30. It has nothing to do with this 60 here, that's just a coincidence or something I put in there. Okay, now this branch, so what I'm going to do is take this 30 and 30, and I'm just going to reduce it to a 60. I'm just going to put 60 right there, because that's what they're acting as. And so this branch, the lower branch, is in parallel with the 60 ohm this 60 ohm. So this 60 and this 60 are in parallel. So how do we find the resistance of two resistors in parallel? Well, the long way would we say is 1 over the effective resistance is 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60. Well, 1 over 60 plus 1 over 60 is 2 over 60. And so the resistance is the reciprocal of this. So in other words, 60 and 60 in parallel is 30. Okay, so do that on your own if you don't see that. That's really important if you feel to figure it out. So now what I've done, okay, let me erase some of these things, is I've reduced this, this, and this to one big resistor that's 30 ohms. Okay, now what do we do? Well, this, all, this is connected to these. So if I look at the 24, this 30, which is a combination of all these three, and the 6, we can see they're in series. So this 30 ohm is in series with the 24 ohm and the 6 ohm. And so to find the effect of resistance, I can add resistors in series. So 24 plus 30 plus 6 gives us 54 plus 6, or 60 ohms. So the resistance of this circuit is 60 ohms. And again, I chose the values to make them nice and even, but it's not. there's no connection between the fact that the overall is 60 and the fact that this is 60. I could have just as well put 43 here and 97 here, and I would have gotten a different value. Okay, now let's do this again 
but let's say one of the 330 ohm resistors is shorted out. So what does that mean? Shorted out means that this resistor has a resistance of zero. Okay. All right, so what we have now is a slightly different situation. We still have coming out of here, this is in series, and this is in series with the battery, but now I've got a branch where there's only two resistors in the branches. So in other words, I have a 30 and 60 in parallel. I don't have a 30, 30 in series with a parallel 60. So this is a little bit easier to do. So my effective resistance for this part right here is 1 over 60 plus 1 over 30, and that's 1 over the effective resistance. So I'm going to do common denominator of 60, so that's 2 sixtieths plus 1, um, excuse me, I did that wrong. My common denominator is 60, but it's 1 sixtieth plus this is 2 sixtieths, which is 3 sixtieths. And the reciprocal of that is 20, right? 60 over 3 is 20. So this whole thing is now... Right, this and this is now 20 ohms. So the 20 ohms is in series with the 24 and a 6. So that would be 20 plus 24 plus 6, which is 50 ohms. So taking this out of the circuit basically reduces the resistance. All right, now let's apply our vert tables okay so how can we figure out the currents and voltages so what we're going to do is a combination of what is called the junction rule loop rule and ohm's law and in the process we're going to learn the, the junction and loop rule okay i'm not going to call them by that right away but we're going to deduce this from rules we already know okay so let's start with current let's figure out how much current is in each part of the circuit so to do that, we're going to first find out how much current there is in the whole circuit. In other words, how much current is coming out of the battery or going into the battery. Okay, so we can apply, we can figure that out by Ohm's law. We can say that the circuit in the current is equal to what's across the entire circuit divided by the effective resistance. That's why we found it right here. Okay, so our voltage is 120. Our effective resistance of all five of these is 60. We already figured that out. And 120 divided by 60 is 2 amps. Okay, so what does that tell us? 2 amps is here, and when it goes into here, I have 2 amps coming in. I have to have 2 amps coming out. That's the law of conservation of charge. So I know the current through the, so the circuit current, let me go back to here, is um, 2 amps. We know the effective resistance is um, 60 ohms. I don't need to put the evenness because I put them in the heading, so let me just put 2 there. Okay, so that's this is really important. It's like a Sudoku again, and this is the key to figuring this out. I did this by doing the combinations of the resistors, and I used Ohm's Law to get this. Okay, we'll do power later. We can work on that. So now what I'm saying is, and this is where the junction rule comes in, if I've got 2 amps here, I have to have two amps here, through here two amps, because I can't lose or gain charge along the way. So the 24 ohm resistor has to have two amps because it's in series with the battery. And by the same reasoning, the 6 ohm resistor is in series with the battery. It's, you got to pass through the 6 ohm to get to the battery. So this is also two amps. Okay, and that's the idea that any resistors in series uh, have to have the same currents, and the, this, this, and this are all in series with one another, so they have to have the same current. Okay, now, what happens when we get to here? Right, so understand, there's two amps coming in. At this junction, the current is going to split. So each branch has to get a portion of that 2 amps. The question is, how much of the 2 amps does it get? Well, to answer that, we got to look at the resistance of each branch. Okay, so this branch right here is 60. There's one 60. What do we know about this branch? Well, there's two of them in series, so the effective resistance of that branch is 60 ohms as well. So in other words, both branches have the same resistance. Therefore, the amount of current here and the amount of current here has to be equal. So if 2 amps comes in, then that means 1 amp goes up through here and 1 amp goes through there. 
1 and 1 adds up to 2. So I know for this 30 right there, it's 1 amp. I know for this 60, it's 1 amp as well. Now the question is, what about this guy? Well, this now I can follow the series rule. If 1 amp comes in here, 1 amp comes out. Therefore, 1 amp goes in and 1 amp comes out. So that's also 1 amp. Now, and you might be confused at this point, but let's follow through with this. So I have 1 amp going up through this branch. I have 1 amp going through this branch. When they come down and come to here, I have 1 amp, 1 amp, and when they come to here, they combine again and give me 2 amps, just like I expect. 2 amps, 2 amps, 2 amps, split, 1 amp, 1 amp, come back to 2 amps. That's how it works. Okay? So I kind of summarize this. Since the voltage sources in series with I1 and I6, what well, must be true of the currents must be the same as the, um, they're the same as the uh, circuit current. Okay, what happens at the junction of the parallel branches? In other words, here or here, the current splits up. Okay, how much goes through each branch? Well, since the resistance of the upper branch is the same as the lower branch, then each branch has equal amps, or excuse me, has one amp of current. That has to be split equally. And since the 30 ohm resistors are in series in the lower branch, each one is going to have one amp each. It doesn't split it up. In other words, the one amp is not split between these two because they're in series. And when they're in series, what goes in must be equal to what comes out, which then goes into the next one. Okay. I've said a lot there. This is a little bit complicated, but it's getting to the heart of what we want. All right. So let's try to do the next part here. Now let's do the voltages. So I've, I've re-stated uh, this. All right. Now let's calculate uh, voltage drop using Ohm's law. All right, so how many loops are there in this circuit? Well, there is one loop here, and then there is a second loop here. So we have two loops. Let's add up the voltages for each of them. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back to the chart. We're going to calculate the individual voltage drops using Ohm's law. I said that, but I didn't do it. Okay, so look at the 6 ohm resistor right here. There's a voltage drop across here, and that's going to equal to I times R, right? So this is 2 amps times 6, so that's a 12 volt drop. Okay, so on this one, we're just going to say V is I times R. So I'm going to do it for each individual. 24 times 2, there is a 48 volt drop across this guy. Across the 30, it's going to be 30 times 1, 30 volts. 30 times 1, 30 volts. And then for this guy, I'm going to do 60 times 1. I got 60 volts. Now, you might be thinking, do these all add up to 120? No, because that's not quite how it works. It's a little bit more subtle than that, but it's in the general ballpark. So now I'm going to go back to this loop rule. I'm going to look at each of the two loops that we mentioned. Okay, so let me just erase this. Okay, so let's take the top loop, all right? So in the top loop, I have, see, not responding. I'm going to draw the top loop. I have these three resistors as part of that loop. So I'm going to add up the voltage drops across each of those three resistors because they make up one loop. So if I go back to my chart here, I got the 24, the 6, and the 60. Let's see, the 24... It has 48 volts. Oops, I don't want that to happen. 48 volts. And then uh, the 6 ohm one has 12 volts. We remember that. And this one has uh, 60 volts. Okay, so 60, 12, and 48. So I would say it would be equal 60 plus 12 plus 48. Right? I'm just adding up the drops across each one. And if I add them up, I get 120. Now let's do it for the bottom branch. So in the bottom branch, that's a, I've got four resistors in series. I've got one, two, one, two, three, four. So if I add them up, the 30s are 30 and 30. So we did that. So I got to do this real quickly because I'm running out of time. So I'm going to have 48 plus 12 plus 30 plus 30, and once again I get 120. And what do you notice about the totals? They equal 
the voltage source, and that's the loop rule. Okay, so I'm going to stop there now, and we'll formalize these in the junction and the loop rule.